And so to our second video of the of actually the early morning as I'm recording this quite late at night because it's quite quiet and I can do it without a distraction. Uh, this is in a to an extent a religious video again, but it's also um, a commentary on the nature of government contracts. Government contracts are infamous for people framing them in such a way that only one or perhaps two suppliers can meet the need because they're framed within such narrow restrictions. And here's a great example of that from America. Bibles at Oklahoma once for schools. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma's top education official, is seeking to purchase 55,000 Bibles for public schools and specifying that each copy contained the Declaration of Independence. I'm not sure how these, having all these Bibles wandering around American schools of it, to some extent, conflicts with their... Um, separation of church and state and secular schooling over there. Perhaps some an American can let me in on that. I can see how a Bible might be used in a, a voluntary religious education class, for example, which is not mandatory, but Americans let me in on this one. In any case, these by the specification was that each copy contains a declaration of independence in the US constitution. Well, you normally find those, of course, in the Bible. How could I imagine they wouldn't be stuck in a Bible? I expect to, as a, as a person of Irish heritage, to find the, the declaration of the, of the proclamation of the Republic stuck in the front of Bibles. Absolutely silly. Um, which are not commonly found in Bibles, but they are included in one endorsed by, strangely enough, by a former president, a man we're all familiar with, Donald the Trump. The man who holds Bibles up to get the evangelical boat in the US, whether he believes in it or not, well, that's a bit more debatable. The request is part of Republican State Superintendent Ryan Walters' ongoing efforts to require Bibles in every classroom, which has been met by our assistance by some of Oklahoma's largest school districts. Now, well, that answers some of my questions. Walters is speaking to spend $3 million in state funds for Bibles that fit a certain criteria. Surely I'd be speaking, if I was seeking to buy Bibles, I'd be seeking to buy the most cheap, durable Bibles. And as we'll see in a minute, Trump Bibles are anything but cheap or durable including that the pages are supplemented with U.S. historical materials. The Bibles must be also bound in leather or leather-like material. I have a funny feeling this bit of Trump Bible is going to be leather-like material. For durability, according to the state bidding documents posted this week, the non-profit news outlet Oklahoma Watch first reported that the requirements match the God Bless the U.S. Bay Bible that Trump urged his supporters to begin buying earlier this year. Our website sells a book for fifty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh, let's let's be reasonable and call that about fifty quid, maybe slightly less, slightly more, depending on the exchange rate. Quite a bit for a Bible. Here is the Trump Bible with that lovely American flag on the front, which I personally find ridiculous. I do not love to see flags on Bibles like that. But the Bible is a universal book. It is not an American book. It is not an Irish book. It is not an English book. It is, in my view, a universal piece of scripture, and I find pressing it into service in this kind of blatantly propagandist and, well, jingoistic way, it would seem, a bit dubious. The Bible also features a copy of Handwritten Chorus to God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. And uh, for those unfamiliar with Lee Greenwood, he's a popular country and Western singer. Um, the US Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Um this strikes me as quite hilarious for anyone who knows some basic U.S. history. Firstly, the U.S. Constitution was signed by people who had various outlooks on faith. I'm sure people, will, some people out there are aware of the Jefferson Bible, where Thomas Jefferson stripped out the bits he thought that were ludicrous for it. Um, there's all sorts of other figures who are deists, um, agnostic, who had all sorts of views fighting the U.S. Constitution. It was certainly not meant to be a a sort of like a Bible bashing document. It does indicate a belief in God, but it's quite wide about what it does it indicate, as I remember. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, as I remember, originally contained no pledge to God, and that was added in long, long after at the height of the um, Reds under the Bed Scare. Um, I find this rather tacky. Uh, it, no harm if they, if they do... Uh, the issue of using Bibles in a secular setting in schools is dubious to me anyway, um, unless we're using them within a, a re um, comparative religious class or comparative theology or something like that. I, I went to a Catholic school, so you expect to find a Bible in there. I would not particularly expect to find a Bible or a Thora or a copy of the Quran or 
like I'd agree to accept as a form of comparison within certain classes if I walked into a secular school. But there we go. I have no idea how much a Bible costs normally in the US, but I'm sure they can be had a great deal cheaper than $59.99. Let's stop the share there, and you can we can all go off and think about that wonderful Bible. <laughs>